Hey everybody, Anthony for Before Diesel. Just going to make a quick video on some information on diesels to do with EGR systems. In particular, why I'm going to explain why your engine oil stays so clean when you've got your EGR flow reduced or the EGR turned off. Now this one's not necessarily that clean, it's done 5,000 Ks, but I just thought I'd pull the dipstick out and have a look while we're having a chat about it. So why does... Firstly, does it, and yes it does, why does the engine oil stay so clean, and that's black as it gets on the dipstick, so I'm not impressing you there, am I? Um, it's done, it's only six months, this oil, it's done about 5,000 Ks. Uh, this is why it stays so clean, it's quite simple. On all the older diesels, they were pretty dirty old machines, you know what I mean? There was a lot of, let's say, messy combustion, pretty, pretty dirty. But the common rails, they're really clean, clean combustion. Obviously the injectors go down directly to the combustion area and you get a really clean burn. Uh, so the oil would stay a lot cleaner, but the problem they've introduced is the EGR system, exhaust gas recirculation, as we've explained in other videos in the EGR information playlist. Check it out if you want more info, but there's a port that comes through the head to this EGR cooler EGR cooler cools those dirty hot exhaust gases down, but unfiltered, straight into your uh, intake system. So your engine's obviously running on what you would hope would be filtered air from over here, and it goes in, gets turboed, and bang, through the pipes, through the intercooler, which is down here in front of the radiator, and back out that side. So it's nice and cool, and it's nice and clean, but then adding in all that dirty stuff. Doesn't really make sense, does it? But let's not explain about that too much because it's in the EJR information playlist. What I want to say is once you reduce that flow, so why does the EGR firstly? So with the exhaust gas recirculation, that goes in the intake. So how does that make the oil dirty? What's that got to do with it? Well, it's pretty simple because remember the engine's running on air, what we talked about in the first place. So in that combustion, it's never 100% seal at the rings, you know, the oil rings and all that sort of thing. So basically, some of what happens in the combustion blows past the, the rings, past the piston, the rings, and ends up in the engine oil at the end of the day. So if you've got nice clean air from your air box, um, and it goes into your intake, into your engine, and it goes kaboom, and then it goes out the exhaust and out the tailpipe, ideally the way it's meant to, and thanks for your little bit of help on the way out to spin that turbo. There you go, little other turbo lessons in the EGR lesson then that's good because it's just clean air. But if you inject, they're not injecting it, I'm just using fancy words. If you inject EGR, exhaust gases, no, if you just, it's just a port basically and it gets drawn by the intake of the engine. Nothing pumps it or pushes it through. It just sort of gets sucked through. You know, some valves open, it just gets, it just flows through that port and creates heat in the front of your head, wrecks your valve clearances at number one. It goes through your EJAR cooler, which has got coolant in it. There's a risk of that leaking. Just stick close on the video. There's a lot of information for you to consider. You need to make your decisions on this and, you know, what's going to happen with your EJAR, whether it's standard, whether you've got a plate with a 7 mil hole, whether you've turned it off, something like that. But when you haven't got all that dirty stuff going through there, it stays clean because when you inject, that's what I was at, injecting all that dirty stuff into the intake pipe that's going into the engine... Then you've got this dirty black soot in the combustion of the engine, right? You've got to understand how an engine works. We've got some videos on that. You can have a bit of a look around. Most people probably know. So in that combustion, when some of those gases blow past the rings and end up in the engine oil, if it's clean, well, then that's good. But if it's got soot in it from your exhaust, you know, you look at, you see diesels, they blow black stuff out the back. Well, these don't really, but there's still an amount of soot. That's why your tailpipe's got black in there. And you've got to think there's a massive quantity of air going through that engine. It's not just a small amount, it's just a couple of litres here or there. That engine's turning over at, what, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000 RPM, times four cylinders, and it's a three-litre engine. You just do some sums. It's a massive amount of air coming through your air filter, through this whole system. And if you put a lot of EJR into there, which they do standard, you get a lot of that black soot in your combustion, small amount blows past into the rings, contaminates your oil, and that's what soot loads your oil. And the newer the vehicle, the worse it will be, even though the engine probably runs cleaner and more efficient, but because of those EGR systems, like the 1GD will be worse than the 1KD. The oil will be blacker sooner, 
simply because it's got more EGR flow, more EGR, it's got to meet stricter emissions. Now, obviously, if they filtered these hot gases and picked it up from after the deep air from those vehicles and brought in the hot air, because you just need hot air. I'm not going into too much detail. I just wanted to say that's why it stays clean, okay? Because it gets dirty because of the EGR. So if you reduce or get rid of the EGR, that's why it stays clean. Quick video just to explain that's why it stays clean. I hope that helps. Let me know in the comments. I'll have a look. Let me know if that helps and now, now you make sense or let me know if it made sense already. Say, hey, mate, I've already watched your EJ Info playlist, so I fully understand how it all works and that. And there is a whole lot more information there for people that want more info if this hasn't really ticked the box for what you wanted to know. But hope you learned something. It was a simple one. Hope you like it. Hit the uh, like button, subscribe, turn the bell on, and we'll catch you on the next video. See ya. So what are your options for a solution? You know, I thought I'd just add a little bit more on another couple of minutes. So your options are some people put catch cans on over here. There's a catch can. It doesn't do anything with your EGR system. It's got absolutely nothing to do with it. Over there is your valve cover. It's got a filter system built into the valve cover. And basically it's extracting or it's, there's a flow. It's similar to this EGR system. Um, there's a flow that re removes moisture and um, anything, any unwanted stuff that's floating around, can crankcase gases, whatever, it removes it out and not much comes out to be quite honest because like I said, there's a filter built into there, bit like a catch can, right? That's why it's sort of shaped like that. And when you ever take it off and have a look at it, you'll go, oh, what's in there? Well, that's what's in there, right? That's why you don't need a catch can. But what you do need is a pipe that goes directly to allow it to flow so that it can keep the inside of the engine clean the way they designed it to work. A catch can does not do anything for your exhaust gas recirculation. That's over here in this port that goes in the EJAR cooler. That one just goes down, turbo. It's long story short, it goes to your intake, short pipe. It's got nothing to do with it, okay? Putting a catch can may reduce the amount of oil that goes through there, but in these engines, it's not much anyway, unless maybe you've got a problem or certain climates. You're going to find more water than oil generally because it's taken moisture out. But to be honest, moisture... Um, you know, taking the moisture out, the you know, just let that little bit, it's taken, you don't want it in your engine because water and oil don't mix, but a bit of moisture in this pipe and a bit of oil, it adds a bit of lubrication. And everybody knows, you know, remember, you know, performance vehicles, we talked about it, water sprays, water. Anyway, the point is the catch can doesn't do anything to help. It wastes your money. Um, in most cases, it can cause some problems and not always help. So do whatever you want. It's not a catch can video. Um, so what are your options? Well, you need to check the legalities yourself depending what state or country you're in and what risk you're prepared to take But um, you can put the plate with the 7 mil hole works really well down here at the start of the EJR cooler It's about 10 or 12 dollars from kaon.com.au in Australia um, Or you can have someone switch off the uh, EJR um, We know some people that can do that whatever the case may be But it's it's your choice you need to do the research work out what you're allowed to do what you're not allowed to do what your vehicle's use is, you know what I mean? They say off-road use or something like that. Look, you know, I don't think anybody really cares to be honest, but each to their own what you want to do. Um, it's a bad idea. Dirty EJR, clogged up intakes, all makes and models. It's just an absolute mess. I don't know what the solutions are for other vehicles. Um, you need to find a, sure, isn't there a Mitsubishi Pajero specialist that, you know, does what we do on these cars? Must be. Let us know in the comments. All right, catch you on the next one. See ya.